Hello everybody and a blessed Good Friday to you. I am filming this video today as a devotional practice for Good Friday. We're not having a service at the church and I think that was a good decision. We had a beautiful service last night for Maundy Thursday and we're going to have a lovely service on Easter Sunday and we have a limited amount of human resources. We're a small congregation and it was a good decision I think not to have a service but I was feeling that I needed to do something for my own um, spiritual nourishment on this day because this day has traditionally been a very important day for me and I thought maybe there might be some others who would appreciate having a time of reflection and prayer today. So I'm going to read the account of the Passion of Jesus. Today I am going to read from the Gospel of John. Last night at Maundy Thursday service, we heard from the Gospel of Mark. And it's a wonderful thing that we have these different accountings of the story that we can listen to at different times during this period of Holy Week. So I am going to just simply read the scripture from John, and then I am going to lead us in a time, a short time of prayer and meditation, and then we will sign off. Um, I don't expect this to be longer than 30 minutes. And I hope that it is a meaningful way for you to gather your thoughts and center yourself today on Good Friday. I always wondered as a kid why we called this day Good Friday. Um, it is such a horrific story that we hear on this day, such a story of violence and cruelty. Um, but also uh, I was reminded that good, much good came out of what Jesus did that day and as sad and horrific as today is and as much as we experience the grief of reliving and remembering the death of Jesus we also know that the story has a happy ending and then on Sunday we will celebrate the resurrection so let us go into the gospel today and think about um, good that comes even from things that can seem really terrible. And so uh, I begin uh, in John on chapter in chapter 18 and I'm starting with verse 28. Then Jesus then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning. They themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters so that they would not be defiled but could eat the Passover. So Pilate went outside to them and said, what accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, If this man were not doing evil, we would not have delivered him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. Then the Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill the word that Jesus had spoken, <laughs> to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called to Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered to the Jews, but my kingdom is not of this world. Then Pilate said to him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him. But you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. So do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? <clears throat> they cried out again, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him, and the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! 
and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die, because he has made himself the king of the Son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid. He entered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, You will not speak to me? Do you not know that I have authority to release you and authority to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no authority over me at all unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the Stone Pavement in Aramaic Gabbatha. Now it was the day for the preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered them over to Jesus to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and he went out, bearing his own cross, to the place called the place of a skull, which in Aramaic is Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but rather, This man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture, which said, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved, standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch, and they held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head, and he gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, and so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath was a high day, 
The Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, that you also may believe. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not one of his bones was broken. And again, another scripture says, they will look on him whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him permission. So they came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloe, about 75 pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus and they bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you. For your church, that in all of the leaders, vocation, and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray for all nations and all people of the earth, and for those in authority among them, for the leadership of the United States of America, for the President and Congress and the Supreme Court, for the members and representatives of the United Nations, and for all around the world who serve the common good, that by God's help they may seek justice and truth and live in peace and concord. We pray especially for those places in the world that are stricken with war and violence, such as Palestine and Israel, especially Gaza and the West Bank. We pray also for the people of the Ukraine, the people of Haiti, and for the many other places around the world where there is violence and destruction for the victims of crime, for the victims of assault. Lord, we pray even for the perpetrators, that your peace would invade their lives, that they would be changed by the power of your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, kindle, we pray, in every heart the true love of peace, and guide with your wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquility, your dominion may increase until the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all who are suffering and are afflicted in body or in mind, for the hungry and those without homes, the destitute and the oppressed, for the sick, the wounded, those who are lonely, afraid, and anguished for those who face temptation, doubt, and despair, for the sorrowful and bereaved, for prisoners and captives and those in mortal danger, that God in his mercy will comfort and relieve them and grant them the knowledge of his love and stir up in us the will and patience to minister to their needs. Gracious God, the comfort of all who sorrow, the strength of all who suffer, let the cry of those in misery and need come to you, 
that they may find your mercy present with them in all their afflictions. And give us, we pray, the strength to serve them for the sake of him who suffered for us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all who have not yet received the gospel of Christ, for those who have never heard the word of your salvation, for those who have lost their faith, for those hardened by sin or indifference, for the contemptuous and the scornful, for those who are enemies of the cross of Christ and persecutors of his disciples, for those who in the name of Christ have persecuted others, that God will open their hearts to the truth and lead them to faith and obedience. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things that were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new, and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please join me as we say together and close our time of prayer and reflection with the words that Jesus taught us. Praying together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us through your spirit Jesus Christ and grant us peace and mercy and freedom deliver us from evil and in all ways guide us and direct us for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I pray that you will have a blessed Good Friday as you take with you today the knowledge that Jesus never changes. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever and that you can have a life of abundant joy, abundant peace, that you can live a life of grace and compassion and mercy, that Jesus can change any heart in any situation. I pray that you would go and be filled with the love and the knowledge of Jesus Christ this day. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.